probably the best card from Champion's Path. Waylord V is a two prize Pokemon with 280 hit points, which can be pushed to 330 hit points with a Cape of Toughness. To put Waylord V's HP in perspective, Phalanx V has 160. That's 120 less, but they give up the same amount of prizes, and that is crazy. Obviously, with that much HP, Waylord V has stall potential, but I'm all about that attack ocean waves. Flip three coins, do 120 damage for each heads, and unfortunately it takes four energy, but with Frostmoth, things aren't that difficult. Now, I'm not 100% confident in this build. You know, the 3-3 three, three Frostmoth line seems to be a bit much, and the set just came out and I haven't had much time to test, but you know, this is how you learn. You make mistakes, you improve the deck, and this is what I came up with to hopefully win some games today. Along the way, I'll probably talk about some of the changes I would make or improvements I'd make, and of course, you could remove the Frostmoth altogether and just use Turbo Patch and Draw Up just to power this up. But I think Frostmoth is the safest bet right now, just that way you get your energy into play, you can use Keldeo GX to take a huge knockout on an Eternus VMAX if you need to, and it's also good against Mewtwo and Mew. And I also chucked in a copy of the Gossip Floor with Call for Family, you just get to fill up your bench basically. Uh, it's very necessary in this deck, and I only have one Crobat and one to Denny because with Gossip Floor, with all the bench Pokemon, you fill up your bench really quick. So I don't know if a 2-2 is smarter or not, but you could cut the Orangaroo, add a Crobat, uh, cut the Gossip Floor, add it to Denny. I don't know. This is what I got. Let's see how it goes. All right, I won the coin flip. I will choose to go first just to see how the deck performs going first. You know, the Gossip Floor is in there, and if I would have gone second, this would have been... It probably would have been a better idea to go second, but what are you going to do, right? I only play the one copy, so you can't guarantee that you're going to get Gossip Floor. It's just... It's there as a safety precaution, and uh-oh, this is bad. But I think with this hand, I made the right call, because this is not a great starting hand. So I'll do that, do that, attach there. I will, I, I might hold off on the great ball. And I mean, they'll probably, I'm guessing this is ADP. Uh, they might Marnie me though. So if I can get a Snom, that'd be perfect. So now if Gossifleur somehow gets knocked out, that's fine with me. You know, maybe I'm regretting benching the Gossifleur now, but with that starting hand, you know, Great Ball is not guaranteed to get you anything. I didn't have a supporter, and that's why I didn't put the Glimwood Tangle down, because I figured something like that might happen. And I do play the Fishing Rod. This is exactly why I play the Fishing Rod. You put down an early cape. Oh, why would you attach to the Crobat, though? Oh, this is... Oh no, this is Lucario Melmetalization, isn't it? This is a bad matchup, I think. Because I can do... Well, if I flip three heads, then I'm fine. It's if it's if I don't flip three heads, which is the problem. Okay, so they'll use Intrepid Sword, and... You know, Zacian V, you have some turns where you don't do anything with this deck, and I think maybe a Zacian V is not a bad idea. Okay, so I have a Quick Ball, that's good. I think I, I mean, oh, this is bad. Of course I have to ditch a bosses, you know, you only play two, of course you have to get rid of it. So there is a world where I attacked this turn. So yeah, let's just, let's do that. I will get the Crobat, oh man. I will not get the Crobat because it's prized, of course it is. You want to get Crobat and then to Denny with a tan like that, and oh wow, okay. Well, I guess I'll just put the Orangaroo down. I will... This is horrible. Okay, well, let's... Uh... I think I should hold off on the Great Ball. Let's call for family. Let's just fail it completely. So the downside to only playing six draw supporters is that you might never see them. And yeah, and then you prize a Crobat, so that's one of the things you learn through testing is, you know, maybe two Crobat and two to Denny is a good idea, maybe having... Okay, that's fine. If you want to keep doing it, if they're having a bad turn too, that's fine with me. And okay. So what I should do now is I should put the Quick Ball on the top and then I should use Great Ball to shuffle my deck. Okay. Give me a... Oh man. There's a Snom, all right. So now my top deck won't be the Quick Ball I put there, so that's good. And 
So now it's a question of do I think they have it? Because I can attack the following turn. You know what? I'm going to use drop. We're going to see what it does. And remember when I said your bench gets jammed a lot? You know, maybe the Gossip Floor is a bit much because I don't play Stoop Up Net and I just kind of have to hope that my opponent knocks it out. Oh! So they are going to use Float Up. They're going to put my Waylord V in range of the Brave Blade. But they might have to promote the Zation, and that'd be pretty funny if they promote the Zation and I happen to knock it out with three heads. Otherwise, they might just promote the Oranguru and let me knock it or the Crobat. That works too. Okay, so that's unfortunate. I don't have a way to bump the stadium this turn. So I think I will put the Snom on the top. There's just the water energy. Alrighty. So I do have a Marshadow for next turn. And then I would have a Snom as my top deck. Uh, yeah, I guess I'll just put the air balloon there. I can rearrange my deck. That is something I can definitely do right now. I'm going to have some energy going in the discard. I can... I don't really want to see a Snom as my top deck. That's the thing. If I whiff this knockout, I need something really good. So I'll just... I'll get the... I'll get a preemptive Marshadow. All right, Waylord. It's, it's time to flip some coins. Two heads. Two head. Here we go. Oh man. Oh man. It's Galarian Cursula all over again. So that happens quite a bit. You know, if they play a Chaotic Swell, you're kind of in trouble. And they are taking a knockout, and that's why the Cape of Toughness is so good. And I, I do think you should play a Tool Scrapper. I've had situations like this already. I've only played, you know, four games with this deck, and whether it's Big Charm or Metal Goggles, you can't knock out a Zation V with a Waylord V. Because uh, you do 240 with two heads, and yeah. Well, well now. So I guess I just... Come on, give me something good, Orangaroo. That is... I mean, if I had a Crobat in the deck, that might be good. Well, there's a Frost Moth. So... This is one of the issues with this build of the deck, is that it's not that consistent. So I think I have to retreat into somebody. I guess it'll be Whale. I guess, yeah, I'll just retreat into Waylord and use Drop and hope for the best. Because I know they can't knock it out this turn. 100% they cannot knock it out. What they can do is, if this is Lucario and Melmetal, which I think it is, they can use Lucario and Melmetal, get rid of all my energy, and then I'm just kind of out of it. But I have not seen a draw supporter this entire game. And have they even... Oh yeah, they've they got lots of supporters in the discard. And they play Crushing Hammer because of course they do. And they... Oh, let me guess. This is going to be the, the Dragapult game all over again. Yep, this is Dragapult all over again. Oh dear. And that's why people hate Crushing Hammer. So, and... Do you see, do you see how good this could have been? This could have been an amazing turn, instead that happens, and finally, finally something happens for me. So I will put the Gloomwood Tangle into play. I would need Switch and 2 energy to be able to attack this turn. I got the Switch. You know, I only play 12 energy in the deck and 2 energy retrieval. So yeah, I guess I'm just going to use Drop again. Uh, yeah, if they Marnie me, I want to have the research ready to go. That's, that's just mean. That is, that is just super mean. So, again, they can't take the knockout, so I'll just attach three in case they have more crushing hammers. And I'll just talk about some other options. You know, some of them are good, some of them are not good, but you could use, like, Omastar, the one that, uh, if your opponent has more bench Pokemon than you, they can't play items, so you could use Omastar and like one Waylord V at a time and just sort of bounce between them. And you can use Drop and Turbo Patch and everything because it's a great attack. I've used it a ton, you know, it, just in this matchup. Oh man. And that's the downside of the Denny. So am I even going to take a knockout this game? Please tell me I can take a knockout this game. But yeah, Omastar, uh, you can use Clay. There's the Marnie. I called it. You can use play. That discards the top seven cards of your deck, and you keep all the items you discard. 
So that can be really good to put your water energy in the discard and use drop, so that's another great option. And the polka doll, okay. But as long as I don't bench another two prizer, they do have to go through this Waylord. Okay, so I'll put the Cape of Toughness on the Waylord, and it, that's just how it happens, isn't it? Okay, so I'm going to put the Water Energy back on the top of my deck. Ditch a switch, that's not what I want to do. Um, I could Marnie, because I mean, I already have an attack this turn. Limiting them to four cards wouldn't be the worst idea. I do have a Quick Ball, okay. So I will Quick Ball the Water Energy. Go grab a whale. Uh, yeah, Waylord V. So I have two energy retrieval. You know, you put cards in your deck to see them at certain points, and then when you don't see them, it's like, why, why are they even in the deck, right? Okay, so I'll have two energy on that one. And I need to flip three heads to take this knockout. So I need to. Oh, okay, well, let's reflip and get three heads, right? One, two. There it is. When all you do is flip heads, this deck is amazing, right? So there's a switch, that's really good. Another Glimwood Tangle. I, I think they probably only play one of the Chaotic Swell, so that's fine with me. And if they aren't taking... If they're not attacking or doing anything this turn, that's great for me, but... I only have one boss's orders left. I mean, if I knock that out, they're probably just going to concede. There's a cape. I have to assume that they just don't got it. There's another switch. Well, I can't use research now. Uh, they can't knock that out. Yeah, I'll just use ocean waves. Oh, please. Okay, I won't reflip because it doesn't matter. So, I could still win. They can't take a knockout this turn, and I can knock out that Zacian V. I just need... All I need is... Three heads, that's it. How, how difficult could that be? Okay, so there's a Marnie. That is, that just completely ruins everything. And, you know, they are going to put 230 damage on it, and there's all the energy retrieval. Okay. So, what I can do is I can just retreat into the one in the back. Please tell me I have two energy in the discard. I have one. Oh, man. Okay, well, the top... Oh, man. The, the top card of my deck has to be a water energy or something. That's a research. I will actually... I'll take that. You know, I don't quite want it, but I'll take it. Okay, so I'll put it there, and then... Yeah, this is, this is tough. And you're seeing, again, Tool Scrapper. Should probably have it in the deck. Uh, I'll just... Do that, I will switch. It has a four retreat cost. Yeah, I guess I'll just switch into it. I have the boss's orders for next turn. All right, let's, let's do this. Crazy comeback time. Okay, well, I flipped three tails. Let's flip three heads. One, two. Oh, man, I totally thought I had it. But yeah, that, that tool scrapper is looking mighty nice right now. And if you play the clay build, you get your tool scrapper. You can get hyper potion if you want that. Because, uh, I mean, Waylord V, as you've seen, it's going to survive two hits. You, know, you put a Cape of Toughness on it, Eternatus V-Match still has a tough time knocking it out, Brave Blade doesn't knock it out, Ultimate Ray doesn't knock it out, so you're, you're surviving two hits almost guaranteed. So it just depends, you know, you kind of have to do the math. Is healing 120 damage at the cost of two energy, is that totally worth it with a Waylord V that has 330 hit points? I don't think so right now, just because, oh... Okay, so what did... Okay, well, yeah, they're... I think they're going to win. So I'll just use... Yeah, I'll just use Ocean Waves and hope they don't have a bosses and... Oh, come on! Couldn't have done that last turn. Okay, so if they don't have it, if they can't disrupt my hand, and if they don't have a bosses, then I win. So this was, this was kind of a good game because we both didn't have what we needed to win. And they have bosses for game, that is unfortunate. And the Hyper Potion... The Hyper Potion actually wouldn't have made a difference. 
just with the way the math works, because it would have been... I would have been knocked out by 10. That wouldn't have mattered, but I think that was a decent game for Waylord. It had a really slow start, so I'll definitely go to game two, but, you know, Hyper Potion, it wouldn't even have made a difference in that matchup. I just think you need to be fast, you need to be smart, but Waylord V, it has so much potential. It can knock you out and he turned his VMAX in just for four energy, and that's amazing. But let's go to game two and see what happens. All right, so I lost the coin flip this time, but I am going second, which is exactly what I wanted. Uh, well, that's not what I wanted. Um, I guess I should put the Arangaru up front, just this way they don't know what I'm playing, because if they know that I'm playing Waylord, they might play something different. Okay, so this is probably Eternatus. I don't think this is going to be Roxy's Sableye or Obstagoon or something. If it's Obstagoon, I am totally screwed. But I'm hoping this is Eternatus. Eternatus is actually a good matchup for this deck. So please let me see a Crobat or an Eternatus V off this Quick Ball. But to touch on the Hyper Potion or to finish up my thoughts on Hyper Potion, yeah, perfect. Uh, your best bet with Waylord, I think, is just to bank on taking two hits and making sure you can string together three Waylord V in a row. I think that's just the best way of doing things. And that's another reason why you don't bench the Waylord is because... If they ping it once with Zigzagoon, it's within range of a full power VMAX, so that's pretty good. And okay, so I think I do that. That I put the Cape of Toughness. And do I Marnie? That is a question. I think no, because in case I get like uh the Denny or something, I don't want to have the bosses on the top. I think I want to try the have the switch on top. And yeah, sure, let's put Gloomwood Tangle down. I play four of those things. Uh, and I'm guessing they had a Crobat. If they didn't have a Crobat, then I'm an idiot, but I think they had a Crobat. Uh, well, I look like an idiot now, because I would have had the uh, the dude. And they don't play Chaotic Swell, so I think I can get rid of the Marshadow. So we'll do that. I think I'll just... Crobat's not prized. That's good. And it would have been smart to use Gossip Floor, but oh well. And one thing you cannot forget about... Actually, I should have ditched the water energy. Oh well. So there's the Denny. I have a great... Yeah, so this is great. As long as I don't Marnie me back, I have a great turn next turn. Uh, I can Primate Wisdom. Oh, okay, well I was going to Primate Wisdom the Denny on the top of the deck anyway, so that's fine. Uh, just As long as I don't Marnie me back, everything is awesome. Hopefully they use Research. And yeah, just when you're playing this deck, do not forget about Keldeo GX. Keldeo GX's GX attack does, I think, 50 for each bench Pokemon your opponent has. So if you're facing Eternatus and they have a full bench, you're doing 350 damage, that's a knockout. So that's great. And if they use Marnie, I'm going to be... Oh man, that's going to be the worst thing ever. Hopefully they don't have a Marnie in their hand and they just have a Research because... This is the exact hand you dream of as a Waylord V player. And if they knock out an Orangaroo, uh, oh yeah, if they knock out a Orangaroo, then I can't Prime with them. That's unfortunate. Okay, and they're just going to scoop up a Zigzagoon. So I'm guessing they play Dangerous Drill. Otherwise, they probably wouldn't be doing this. Nope, okay, so they don't play Dangerous Drill. Boss is. So they're just gonna hit into they're gonna hit into it. Okay, that's actually really annoying. So what I have to try and do is switch into the crowbat, I think. Yeah, I'll switch into the crowbat. Evolve into Frostmoth. I think I'll just attach an energy to the crowbat. And then Primate Wisdom, the Dedani Watch. 100% this is going to be a boss of the orders. I can guarantee it. Oh, it's Keldeo. Okay, well, Keldeo's definitely going down. So, yeah, I'll save Keldeo till the end. Don't need that right now. And, yeah, it's Professor's Research. Just need an energy. That's it. And I got the Glimwood Tangle. And I have the Switch. Wow, this was, this was pretty good. So I'll just... I think... Well, I mean, I have the switches now, so and I don't have a uh, Floatstone or a Pivot Pokemon, so yeah, it's smarter just to use the switch here. 
Uh, if they knock out Frostmoth, I still have a Waylord V with four energy, so putting the Snom down doesn't make sense. Uh, they don't really have anything going on on their side of the field, so yeah, let's just go for it. And do it the opposite way, and uh, they'll concede of shame. Ah, oh, again! Again you did it, Waylord! Oh, man. You know, you think if it's an 0-3 swing one way, you think, oh, man. So I should have retreated. You know, you can't know these things. But you think if it's an 0-3 swing for tails, you get a 3-0 swing for heads, and then, of course, it just bait and switch right there. Okay, well, they're attaching to a Crobat, so that's good. And they won't be able to get a VMAX on the field this turn. So, yes, they're taking a knockout, but it's actually not that horrible. So what I think I do here is I just... Okay, well, I need energy retrievals, that's for sure. And then I will definitely put the, the Denny down. So I'm going to be, be going with one Frostmoth. Uh, yeah, so I have the switch. I need to hold on to the switch. I need to... I'll get rid of the Snom. I'll get a... So I think the way this is going to work is I'm just going to attack with Keldeo and then attack with Waylord, and that'll be it. So I don't need the extra Waylord. So let's put that down, and I think I Primate Wisdom the switch. And if I get an Energy Retrieval right now, that'd be perfect, but it's probably... Okay, it's a Quick Ball, that's fine. Okay, give me some energy retrievals, or some buckets. I don't know if I have enough energy left. I have four. Okay, perfect. So I'll just clean it out. So the question becomes, do I just attack with Waylord? So I'll get... Yeah, I guess I'll get Snom. So if I attack with Waylord, it saves the Keldeo, and they will probably have to... Because I have two buckets down, I have a bunch of energy down. I think I just attacked with Waylord. You know, this is a Waylord deck. Let's attack with Waylord, and that way the Keldeo is always looming, and they can't ever attack with a, a full bench of Eternatus. So I'm basically putting them in a position... Yeah. I put them in a position where, you know, I attack with the Waylord, and then that way, if they ever build up another Eternatus VMAX, and they do 270, then I just hit them with Keldeo GX and I win. See if I can bring it up. Yeah, Resolute Blade GX does 50 damage for each of your opponent's bench Pokemon. That's 350 damage. So if they ever, if they ever filled up their bench, that was it. If you know, I was also knocking out the VMAX, the Eternus VMAX. So they would have had to discard a bench Pokemon. So things worked out really well. I think the matchup against Eternus with Waylord is actually really good. You know, it's not 100. percent It's it's probably closer to like 60, percent but it's still pretty good. And I'll go to game three and see what happens there. All right, and for the third and final game, I won the coin flip. I'm facing off against Greymon. Uh, okay, I guess I just send a Snom up front and give it the old pass. So this is a decent starting hand. Hey! I'll give him a smiley face. <laughs> you know, it's a water deck versus a water deck. You know, they're going to be a little disappointed when they see the Waylord, and it's not a Lapras. But I think I can ditch the... Keldeo? Okay, well, I think I put the Waylord down. I do that. I put the Snom down. I put the... Do I put the Keldeo down? I... Well, I mean, if I'm gonna... I think I just pass, to be honest. I think I just wait. Because the Keldeo could be good, and Resolute Blade would do 250. It's a, you know, for three energy, doing 250 damage is pretty good. And if they have any surprises in their deck, there's a Marnie, okay. Hopefully they Marnie me into my supporters. And you would not believe the bad luck I've had recently with games. Uh, in between, between this game two and this game, oh man. You would not believe the bad luck I've had. I faced off against ADP. My opponent didn't show up, so I just sat for two minutes doing nothing. Uh, the game after that, I can't even remember. And then the game after that was Senti Storch. Both times I've played against Senti Storch, my opponent has conceded pretty much right off the bat. Uh, Senti Storch players know there's not much you can do against this deck. Uh, okay, so let's see what they got rid of. They got rid of an Inteleon VMAX, Marnie Research, Body Surf, Attach an Energy, and Switch. 
Oh, that could be really bad. The Inteleon VMAX could be horrible for me. Oh yeah, and it's it's an Inteleon VMAX deck. It's not a Lapras VMAX deck. It's Inteleon VMAX with just a single Lapras V because it does, it does 210 damage for 4 energy, and that's really good. And you return those 2 energy to your hand, so it's a, it's a pretty good attacker. And there's the cape. So I think I Marnie them. I think I'm just going to... Man, but if they get uh, an Inteleon VMAX, I am in just a heap of trouble here. Okay, well, let's let's just do this and see what happens. Okay, that's not great. I think I... Come on, Great Ball, get me a, get me a Frostmoth. Well, there's a Snom. Just have a, a field full of Snom. But I think what I'll do is I'll Quick Ball the Snom. Go get a Waylord. Fishing Rod the Snom back in just because they could potentially do some things here that I don't want them to do. Then I'll put the Dedenny down, but I think with me putting this Dedenny down, I think that puts me in a really bad position. Especially because I can't seem to freaking find a Frost Moth anywhere. Oh my... Uh, okay, well this is apparently, this is why you play Pokecom. And I'll put the research away, and let me guess, this is a Frost Moth. No, it's Gloom Tangle, okay. Well, sure, let's put the Gloom Tangle into play, and as long as I don't get an Inteleon VMAX this turn, and three energy on it, then I'm fine. But with max bullet, they can do 160 and snipe 60, so that's just both Snom done. And maybe I should have done a better job getting rid of that Snom out of the active, but... You know, th this is just how it goes with Waylord sometimes. I think the perfect list has still yet to be found. I don't know if the perfect list exists right now. I think that's something that might evolve over time. But as for whether or not, you know, is Waylord the best card from Champion's Path? I think it probably is. You know, 4 energy, you can do 360 damage, it powers itself up. That That's amazing. That is that is just amazing. And they're going to boss is probably my other Waylord. Oh, that Waylord. Okay. Are they just going to snipe shot somebody? Probably a Frostmoth. But what? Oh, they're going after the Waylord. Okay. So I have the research. I Since I already used the fishing rod, I think I want to keep... I can keep the no, I don't want to keep the water under that'd be stupid. I think I'll ditch or I'll keep the the Keldeo can do 110 for three energy. Let's keep the Keldeo. You know it's a Waylord deck, let's keep the Keldeo. And that is just Man, that, that's just what happens. Okay, so I will attach to I guess I'll just attach to this one and then research. So switch. Still no Frostmoth. Okay. That, uh, still no Frostmoth. Don't even know how this is happening. So what I can do is I can put a Cape of Toughness on a Snom to make sure it doesn't get knocked out. But they didn't do anything last turn. So I can drop... Um, yeah, let's just drop. Sure. Why not? But what? What? I have 26 cards left in deck and I haven't seen a Frostmoth? What, what is this trickery? You know, I know I play Great Ball, maybe it should be Pokecom, but you don't play a ton of Pokemon in this deck. You know, it's a 3-3, three, three, there's like 15 or 16 Pokemon in the deck, so, but I mean, I guess that's enough, okay. And, oh no, 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 no. You know, the good news is, is that I can still knock out an Inteleon VMAX in, in just one turn. The bad news is they might take a Snom, and how? How do I still not have a freaking Frostmoth right now? You know, they're, they're, they have so many Frostmoth, they're getting rid of them. So they'll max bullet. Uh, so I'll be at 200. And okay, so this is a situation where the Hyper Potion would make a difference. You know, they were very smart with that early snipe shot. But if I can just knock it out this turn, doesn't matter. So I'll put the air balloon there, I will do that, I'll put the research on the top of my deck, because I'm going to Marnie, I'm not going to be stupid, I'm going to Marnie. So let's Marnie, and maybe that other snom was a good idea, we'll find out, oh my, 
Like, did I prize all of my frost moth or something? Is that what's going on right now? Okay, let's do this. Let's just three heads. Oh, that's beautiful. That is absolutely beautiful. And that might just be game right there. Oh man. You know, the Waylord deck is super frustrating, but when you flip three heads on ocean waves, everything is forgotten. You flip three heads, you knock out a VMAX, and it's just, it's amazing. It's, it's better than when you, you know, take a huge knockout with Baby Blacephalon. It's, it's just amazing. And the mouse almost went flying, but I caught it. Okay, so I don't know why they sent up the Snob unless they have a way to retreat it. Because they definitely don't want to lose their Snob. Just like I don't want to lose my Snob either. So they're just going to probably grab a Inteleon. Yeah. You know, the reason I benched the other Snob... Okay, well, it doesn't matter now. I was going to say, the, the reason I benched the other Snob is because they could Zigzagoon and Snipeshot the other one. Or they could... You know, there's probably some other shenanigans they could have done. So I just wanted to make sure I had two Snob, so they can't do any shenanigans, and I can get the other Waylord V powered up, because once I have two Waylord V powered up, it doesn't matter, because they knock out two Snob, they're at four prizes, and then that's 2-2, two, two, so that would have been game anyway. So it, as long as I have two Waylord V fully powered up, it doesn't matter. So that was all I was trying to do. And they don't know I have three Switch in my hand. So unfortunately for them... My, my hand is just jam-packed with cards. Okay, so I will put the Glimwood Tangle into play. I could... Oh, Training Court, I don't have for that. So, yeah, I guess I just hold off. So I will attach there. I will do that. I will... I mean, if I... I can't risk whiffing... Okay. I was going to say, like, I, I was going to hold on to the uh, Glimwood Tangle, but I'm like, if I whiff a knockout on that Snom, if I don't do, if I don't flip one head, I'm not going to do it. But so I would have put the Glimwood Tangle into play, I would have taken the knockout, would have been down to two prizes. They would have needed to take five prizes, so that's three knockouts. I was one knockout away from winning. And even if they get an Inteleon VMAX up and running, I could have just used Ocean Waves again and knocked out another one, and that would have been insanely good. So to answer the question in the title of the video, is Waylord V the best deck from Champion's Path? I would say yes, but that speaks more to how bad Champion's Path is than how good Waylord V is. You know, this is, it's not tier one, it's not tier two, maybe it's tier three, I don't know. Ocean Waves, it can knock out any VMAX out there except like Dreadnought VMAX if it has a buff padding. So the Waylord V is really good. But as you saw from some of my matches, it can be super frustrating. You rely on coin flips, which is always just a dangerous gamble. And if you're not flipping heads all day long, you're going to have a bad time. But with 280 hit points and 330 when you put a Cape of Toughness on it, it's going to survive at least two hits, and that is insanely good. And if you want to take this deck for a spin, I'll leave the list in the description. But keep in mind that Champion's Path just came out, so this card is like 20 Darkness of Blaze packs each. So you're spending 80 packs just to build this deck. I would say, you know, maybe wait a few weeks to build this before, you know, so Waylord V can go down in price. You know, it'll be five packs before you know it. It's just Champion's Path is brand new. There's only a couple ways to get Champion's Path packs anyway. As more Champion's Path products go on the shelves, then the price will go way down. So yeah, Waylord V hits really hard, has a lot of hit points. It can definitely disrupt the, you know, the VMAX decks out there. Uh, Against ADP, I haven't actually played ADP yet, but I figure it should have an okay matchup. Probably you'll win like 25% of the games. That's that's so-so against ADP, I think. Just as long as you don't have to bench anybody, you're fine. But once you start benching Pokemon, uh, ADP can just go right through you. And then as you saw against Eternatus and Inteleon and other VMAXs, it can take those big knockouts. And against the smaller decks, you know, against Mad Party, I think you probably just lose. And against something like Baby Blacephalon, that would be an interesting matchup. They have to get rid of a ton of energy just to take a knockout, but I think that's also not a great one. And if you've noticed that everyone is playing Senti Storch, just use Waylord V. Senti Storch doesn't play Weakness Guard energy. They don't have a way to stop Waylord V, and they'll pretty much just concede when they face you. 
So yeah, I'm going to stop rambling. Thank you for watching. I will see you next time, probably with a Dreadnought VMAX deck. I'll see you then.